At first blush, one would think, who put these readings together? They seem to be a bit disjointed and may not seem to relate to each other very well. But I think we have been together long enough now that we have talked about how Holy Scripture for us is structured. That if we remember this structure and keep in mind that Scripture is always for our good and never for our ill, then we can begin to maybe see how what on the surface seem disconnected are actually quite connected on a different level. Remember that the Old Testament and the Gospel usually have some relation to each other. It is very much like a musical piece where the melody of the piece, the right hand, is played with the Old Testament and the Gospel. And then we have a second reading, the New Testament reading, often from the Apostle Paul, that is more the left hand, more the harmony. Sometimes there is a thread of continuity, other times it is complementary or contrasting. And if we keep that in mind, then we can relook at today's scripture that the church offers us and wonder how it might apply to us. The prophet Amos was never one to mince words. He was always very direct. And so there's no nuance in what he says in his, in his reading. After the Sabbath is over, if you go back to messing with your scales and inflating your prices and just planning on cheating the people, the Lord will remember. Boom. It's clear. No nuance. Very clear. Yeah, but then we get to the gospel, and now all of a sudden it appears that dishonesty is being applauded. That the dishonest steward is given the attaboy <clears throat> for working his way out of a pickle. <clears throat> and yet sometimes re realizing that we have to think as our Lord thinks, and remember that our Lord is a master, a genius, he's God, we have to look for the irony, look for the paradox. And scripture was never meant to be read once and decided upon. It's always meant to be read multiple times. And sometimes we even have to read it backwards. And in this gospel, it is very reasonable to read it backwards and begin with the last line. You cannot serve both God and mammon. You cannot serve God and you cannot serve the world at the same time because the worldviews are completely different. One is a view of, of light and a new way through Christ. The other is more on the base human nature and might not be quite as light as the other path. And if that is the case, then as we move up into the text of the gospel, it begins to make more sense. Because if, if we are living by our wits and simply by our base human nature, then when we get into a pickle, the first thing we try to do is save our skin. Always the easiest thing to do is to is to walk and act in the truth. I have sinned, please forgive me, master. This dishonest steward says, I have sinned, but I'm in a mess, and I have to figure out how to get out of this. And then we get this convoluted effort on his part in order to figure out how to save his skin in this situation. And he kind of does, because the master says, boy, 
you did okay. And then we have to ask ourselves, really? Really? Is that the message our Lord is trying to give us? And in that irony, in that, in that question, we say, well, it can't be. And then we read further on when our Lord talks about the children of the light and the children of the world. And the irony is, he says, if you are looking at this situation as a child of the world, then it makes perfect sense. It's fine because you've gotten yourself out of a pickle. Nobody seems to be hurt. No harm, no foul. This is moral relativism. As long as nobody gets hurt, then all is okay. And then our Lord poses the other question and says, yeah, it seems like the people of the world have it all together. They're, they're kind of working with each other. They know how to, how to get along. But it seems like those people who walk in the light, those, those new wares, those, new, those folks following a new way, they're the ones that are, seem to be kind of ignorant. They don't seem to get it. They don't seem to know how it is to get along in the world. And that's the contrast that our Lord is giving us. Because you see, if he stood up there and just started wagging his finger and saying this and that and whatever, many people would just back off and say, I'm sorry, I don't hear you. But he gives us this very ironic message for us to consider. And then it becomes clear if I walk as a child of the light, I would never, never even consider cheating as this steward did. That's just not in my worldview. But then the Lord goes on to say, but you better realize that that's the way the world operates. Because if you don't realize it, you will fall into the trap as well. But he says there are consequences. Beware of the consequences because if those little things, if you're just cheating and conniving and saving your skin and trying to finagle your way out of responsibility in the little things, then how are we to be held, how are we to be given and thought to be responsible for the kingdom of God? Responsible even for our salvation. Because those who are not responsible in the little things, how can they be responsible in the big things? That's the question our Lord is asking. And those who are, those who walk in the light, those who seem ignorant to the rest of the world, they would never even consider behaving in that way. So even with dishonest wealth, even living in the world as we do, they're still responsible for acting rightly and may be given responsibility for the kingdom. And lastly, Timothy and Paul play this undercurrent. And it's, it's a very low note that says devotion, dignity, devotion, dignity, salvation, knowledge, truth, devotion, dignity, salvation. And that's playing underneath in the background. The answer is down in the left hand, playing. It is our conscience. This is our conscience speaking to us. This is the choice we have been given. Darkness, lightness. So as we pray the rest of this Holy Mass, our Lord is not condemning any of us, but he is offering us a choice. Walk in the light as a child of God, or walk in the darkness as a child of the world. But there are consequences to the choice. And our Lord invites us, does not command us, does not whip us, but invites us to make a choice for the light. Praise be Jesus Christ.